right, your turn. That's not how you play the game. この番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りします。Hi, I'm Masto. In this video, I'll be making a water bottle in anime style. Hopefully, you'll get an idea of how to render transparent materials, making anime like reflections, and turning some PBR elements into NPR. Before we start, let us set up the file. We'll be using EV, turn on bloom, turn on transparent under film for now, then choose standard instead of filmic under color management. Now, let us make a bottle. I like to start with a circle and note that the number of vertices actually matters in this case. Later on, I'll be making the bumps at the bottom of the bottle, and I'll be extruding some evenly spaced faces. I'll be using 16 vertices for the circle, and I want 4 bumps, so I'll be extruding these faces. Extrude 3 faces, then skipping 1. If you want, say, 5 bumps, you can use a circle with 20 vertices. Then divide this number by 5, and you'll get 4. We can then skip every 3 faces to get the evenly spaced bumps. With this in mind, you can design a bottle however you like. Make use of different falloffs of proportional editing. You can make it really fancy, but I'll just keep it simple. When you finish modeling the bottle, duplicate some of the middle faces and separate them to make the label. Now let's work on the materials. I'll be using an HDRI as a main light source for the scene. The good thing with HDRI is that you can easily get some irregularly shaped reflections on your model. Make some two step shaders for the cap, the main bottle, and the label for now. We'll start adding some notes in the main bottle plastic material. I'll change the base shader of the plastic to a glossy shader so we can get some smoother reflections. Adjust the color and plug this color ramp into an emission shader. Mix the emission shader with a transparent shader and remember to switch the blend mode of the material to alpha blend. If you scrub through the factor, you can adjust how transparent the material is. You can see right here that I turned off show back face in the material. But this is just temporary, just so I can view the shader better. Now, instead of using the mix to control the transparency, we can duplicate the color ramp and use it to control the factor for the lighter and darker parts separately. As the emission is on the first input and the transparent is on the second, when the factor is closer to one, the material will be more transparent. The same thing happens if you plug a grayscale color closer to white into the factor. With this in mind, I'll use the color ramp to make the brighter parts less transparent. We can then group these sets of notes as the base of the material using a frame. Now, what I'm gonna do is to add some Fresnel to the bottle. I'll add a Fresnel node, plug it into an emission shader, and use an add shader to add it on top of the base shader. I'll call this Fresnel highlight. I'll drop a color ramp after the Fresnel to make it look more like cell shading. After this, I'll duplicate the Fresnel highlight nodes and make some extra strong highlight. Add it on top of the previous shaders, and make the Fresnel thinner by adjusting the IOR and the color ramp. We can make some really cool glowy highlights as if the bottle is under strong sunlight. The thing I don't like is how the strong lights are showing at the bottom, so I'll mask it using the Z-generated coordinates. Multiply the Z on top of the Fresnel and control the mask using a color ramp. Now the liquid or the water. I will duplicate the whole bottle except the mouth, and fill the hole using grid fill. 
I'll give it a simple shader for now, mixing an emission and a transparent shader. However, we don't want the bottle to always be full, so let us use some boolean on the water. I'll enable this add-on called bool tool, and I'll add a cube to act as a boolean object. Select the cube, then the liquid, and go to the panel on the right under edit, bool tool, and choose difference under brush boolean. Now we can freely adjust the shape or amount of the liquid. I'll go back into the liquid shader and use the for now with the color ramp as the emission color. In anime, most of the time we have outlines on our characters and objects. And in the previous videos, I often use a technique called inverted hole. But let's say I try to add some blue outlines on a bottle. It doesn't really work because of the bottle being transparent. Luckily in Blender, we have freestyle, which is a way to add outlines. Let me now enable freestyle and render an image. We've got these black outlines which are pretty nice but we can make it better. Go to the view layer properties on the right and you'll find a section called freestyle line set. First let's go to the freestyle color and you'll see the default line color is black. But let's add a modifier called material. With this we can set the outline color for each material. Let me go to the main bottle material, go down to freestyle line, and set the line color. I'll make it blue for demonstration. Now if I render an image, we can see the outline of the main bottle is now blue. We can also set the alpha or transparency of the outline. So go back to freestyle line set, under freestyle alpha, add the modifier called material. If we render again, you can see the outlines disappeared because by default the alpha is 0 in the materials. If we turn the alpha back up, we can see the outlines again. This is very useful when you want outlines only for certain materials. Let's set the colors and alpha for all the materials. It's not bad, but I want to add some thickness variation on the outlines to give it a hand-drawn look. I'll be using a technique I discovered before in the BNPR show. So back in the line set, we can drop down to the freestyle thickness and add a modifier called a long stroke. Then change the mapping to curve, and we can modify the curve below to control the thickness variation of the outlines. Maybe something like this. Adjust the max and min values so you can see the outlines clearly. I turned up these values so you can see the effect more clearly. You can use some crazy looking curves and get some nice variations. It's always nice to add some textures, so I'm gonna unwrap the bottle. I'm using an add-on called Text Tools, and there's a function called Rectify that can easily make your UV islands look more regular in shape, which is pretty useful for texture painting. If you're using a 2D painting software, I suggest exporting the UV layout of your model. I loaded my model into Procreate and did some texture painting. Before I add in those textures, I want to adjust the materials a little bit more. I think it's weird to have the strong highlights all around the bottle. So I'm gonna add some two-step shading notes with a glossy base and multiply it onto the strong for now highlight. Now this makes a bit more sense. Time to add back those textures. For the bottle cap, with a black and white texture, I can use it as a factor and mix in some extra shadows in any color. And for the label, just multiply the shading back onto the texture. I wanted to add some water droplets, so I'll start with an icosphere and give it a material, also with a glossy base tune shader and some Fresnel highlights. Make it a bit more transparent and I'll start scattering the droplets on the bottle by hand with the help of face snapping. Some people might prefer using particle systems, it's your choice, but it's just a few droplets so I might as well do it by hand. Now everything for the bottle is basically done, and I'm just gonna go back and tweak a few things. No big changes made in here. Let's give the bottle a floor to sit on. I'll make a plane and give it a PBR texture that I downloaded from Polyhaven. We can easily turn this PBR material into NPR. 
add the shader to RGB after the principal BSDF, followed by a separate HSV connected to a combined HSV. We can drop a color ramp between the Vs and give it a more cell shaded look. We can then multiply some shadows on top, and to make some clear shadows, add some lights to the scene if you have to. Lastly, let's add the background. Turn off transparent background and jump into the world material. I'll duplicate another set of background nodes and mix them using the S camera ray property in the light path node. Now the upper background nodes will act as the background light source and the lower background nodes will be the visible background. Choose another HDRI for the visible background if you want, and adjust the colors for a bit. Maybe bump up the saturation a bit. A cool trick to give your background a more painting-like look is to add a Voronoi texture between the mapping and the HDRI. Instead of color, plug in the position. If you start changing the scale, you can get this interesting painting look. Of course, it's the best to use an actual anime background, but this is one of the lazier, quicker ways to make a background that matches your anime objects. Now this is the final Blender render that I have, but we can do a bit more. Post-processing and compositing are big parts in anime, so I did some simple post-processing to the render. And yeah, I fixed my handwriting. But now this is the final product. What's important to know is that you can use these techniques on other scenes. Maybe instead of a water bottle, you can make a glass jar. This video is just a demonstration of various techniques, and you may just take certain pieces that you find useful and use them on your own renders. Hope this video helps and I'll see you next time.